Well, hello, ladies and gents. We are back with a number t another timber framing vlog for your viewing pleasure. So tonight, what we have in store for you tonight. The hay wagon is done. I pretty well finished that up last night. It's actually sitting out in the field right now with a full load of hay on it. I will show you guys that thing loaded down in a video intro at some point here coming up because there's plenty more hay to draw with it. But it did exactly what it was supposed to. Both sides move when they have to. I ended up running another uh, 16 foot long 2 by 10 pressure treated down each side just to tie everything together a little better and that beefed up that back end no more sway. Somebody had mentioned putting an X brace in there with angle iron. That was an excellent idea. The only hard part about that idea, in case you, when you see it and you see, well, gee, why didn't he do it? The problem with that hay wagon is those, those runners, they're actually anchored on opposing corners. They're not anchored on all four corners because what's got to happen with that running gear, those axles are meant to pivot like that when it goes through a field. So you need your, your runners, they need to be able to uh, pivot with the movement of the running gear. So anyway loaded it up. I've got uh, probably close to 9,000 pounds of hay on it. It didn't flex anywhere in the middle. I'm happy with it and it pulled through the field nicely. So enough of the hay wagon. We are beyond it. That's one more obstacle out of our way. So tonight on this exciting episode of timber framing vlog or whatever you guys want to call it, we are going to be doing some more top plate work. We're going to be covering top plates until we're done. Um, Kind of important to me that you guys see how long this stuff actually takes, especially if you have limited time to work on it, because for most of us, that is part of how it goes. We, just about all of us, do not have a big block of time to sit day in, day out, and devote hours upon hours to these projects. So you get a little bit done as you can, when you can, but don't get discouraged. I do sometimes, I'm sure you guys can tell on the videos, if I can't get to the project, I get a little, little pissed about it, but it is the way it is, so... Anyway, tonight I showed you guys uh, a few videos back how to cut one of those um, edge haft and uh, one of those scarf joints. The terminology once again escapes me. I showed you guys how to cut one of those and we did it with the, uh, the Bigfoot circular saw, we did it with hand saws, and then we did it with uh, the chisel. The long cut to half that, tonight we're going to do that on the band saw. I'm going to show you guys how I set that up and what we got to do. Now the important thing to know when you set these up on your bandsaw, put your reference face has to go down. So don't put your reference face up because if your your band blade is squared to the bunks on that sawmill, if you put that reference face up and your timber is out of square, the joint you want to cut is also going to be out of square. So keep that in mind if you guys are cutting these on a bandsaw mill. So Without further ado, we're going to slip into time lapse mode for a little bit. And I'm going to get this uh, timber on the mill. We're going to get set up. We're going to get ready to go. So stay tuned. So, I've got that joint laid out now on this end that's going to be running from north to south on the building. And the process you're going to follow while you're laying these joints out, you start on the plate that you want to start with. You get that laid out, you get the scarf cut in it, and then you lay out your wall post. You get your scarf cut in the following timber, the following top plate and you get your wall post laid out in that. You do not cut any of the wall post joinery for it. You don't, you're only cutting the scarfs at this point. Because what we need to do, we need to cut every single scarf and lay out every plate as we go, but we have to fit them all together as we go because this has to be exact. This is the most, I'm not going to say it's the most, but it is one of the most critical points of your project to where you have to have everything lined up perfectly otherwise you're going to be you're just going to be mad when you're trying to put it on you want this thing to just thunk right into place when you go to put this up and that's what i'm going for here perfect world that usually does not happen but 
there's a lot more uh, people who are a lot more professional with this than I am so we're gonna get this thing on the sawmill I've got my helper here she's gonna move the saw horses for me I'm gonna set this on the sawmill gotta pull it forward we get the sawmill set up and then we just make that long cut and save ourselves a lot of time down at the end of this so remember I probably it took me two and a half hours the other night to cut the first one and I got a camera thief here trying to sneak into the shot. out on the band mill we're gonna do our finished cutting now and we're gonna see how quick so right now by the time you figure in putting this thing back on the sawmill getting set up we may be probably 20 minutes into it but all we have left to do the only two uh, the only two tools we need are gonna be this big foot now three tools big foot the handsaw and our two inch framing chisel. I get my gangster hat going, accommodate the flashlight, screw you guys up with crazy lighting. There we go. We're jiggling the camera. Yeah, that was a lot easier, huh? There's one block of firewood. So before we go too much farther, thing I want to check right now is I want to make sure that this piece here is square. And if it's not, you notice I haven't cut anything on the other end yet. The reason we're doing that and climb out of here. I always put myself in a corner, you know, I get this whole slab, this whole barn, and I gotta line myself up in a bunch of stuff. So, I have not cut anything on this end yet, primarily for the reason that if I have to trim this back to get it square, I can. It's good there, good there, really good there. The next thing I want to do is make sure that this piece is square to my reference face, which is going to be out here. And check it in a few spots. And that's really good. Now that right there, those little checks, that's what's going to make it so that everything you're doing is going to fit together nicely. That is the end goal here, guys. We want this to fit together nicely. Again, we're going to square this end off that we have to trim. We're going to square it off with a reference face. Pretty good. Now we can lay out this, we can lay out this tenon that's going to go on this end. Let me move you guys a little bit closer, see if we can get you a close shot. We can lay out this tenon. Remember this tenon's six inches long. I'm going to lay it out with, uh, I'm going to use this guy to where I can see the numbers here. Measure in four inches from the reference face and then six inches from the reference face. 
Now, if you folks are wondering why, if you're curious why I'm not laying out four inches in and four inches in, remember we're trying to get everything on the outside of the building flush for siding. So that's why we're doing this the way we do it. That's why we use the square rule. We could do it other ways, but when you do it, if you don't do it that way and you got inconsistencies, that's when your joints are going to get off and that's when you're going to get all mad at yourself and start throwing a fit and crying and screaming. Kind of like what I do when I don't get my own way. Now I can square off of this because I know this was square to my reference face. Remember my reference face is up on this. And this is nice and square to that. So can you guys see that footprint now? Now what we're going to do, because we want this shoulder here square with this face, we're going to continue this line down. We have just enough room to do it. Again, make sure your square is flat. this off the handsaw. Six Geo Metro, otherwise I know you as Terry. This one's for you, buddy. This one's a little bit longer. Also, want to say welcome home to uh, Tools Consumable. He, he popped up again after a couple of months. He's been in Germany helping his sister-in-law. He's a handy guy, so his time is in demand. But there we go. This one, guys. This one took us about an hour to do if you figure the actual cutting on it. We lost, uh, it probably took more time getting this thing onto the mill than it did to cut the actual joint. So that is a hell of a lot easier to do it that way if you have a bandsaw mill. Um, Jim Rogers had asked me, you know, why didn't you cut it on that? I kind of wanted to show you guys on the first couple how you would do it by hand because not all of you are going to have a band mill at your disposal. So I'm lucky that way. I'm lucky my wife let me get it, you know what I mean? But, um, so... Anyway, she's cut. It's nice and square. If you're using a band mill, remember, I said it a few times in this video, reference face down on the bunks so that, and make sure, and that's a, actually, that's another good thing you want to check before you actually cut the joint. Measure your band blade, make sure it is parallel, perfectly parallel to those bunks. Because uh, if it's not, your joint's going to get off. And that's also the other reason why you leave some of the line. 
Now I still have a little bit of pencil line showing on this, but I have my five inches and it's good and square to those shoulders right there. So this one is ready for the next scarf to line up with it. Um, once we get the other scarf, now let's see, we have three more scarfs to cut and these top plate scarfs are cut on this end and then we can lay out I mean I have these two laid out but we can lay out the rest of them like I said remember guys when you're doing this put those scarves together exactly how they're going to be together up on the frame that way once you go to put it all in place it all lines up you don't have much room you really have no room for error on this part of it so triple check your measurements I keep going back because it's been a few days since I cut the other one so I have to go back make sure what I did that's what happens when you don't write things down but I think we've done all right on this project so far for having no building plan, no cut sheet, and just kind of doing it doing it out of here, like I said, except for the load calcs. Those I wrote down. What I'm thinking about doing when I'm done with this project, I may take the time to sit down and do a good, uh, a good drawing, a good set of plans of this barn and throw them up on the website. Um, it may seem like a huge project, and it is a big project, you know, but everything in it is really simple. The joints are real simple. Some of them look more complicated than they are, but they really are simple, straight-up, English-style joinery. But uh, So, anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. If you like this, like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever you feel like doing. It helps the channel out, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one.